Question is from Max C. Smith. I've been addressing forward shoulder for about a year and have made good progress with my posture, but my neck still shoots forward. Any tips or strategies to help with this? Yeah, those are two mm-hmm. separate things there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so roll, when your shoulders roll forward, usually it's also accompanied by the head forward position where the head kind of jets forward. But that doesn't mean if you fix one, you fix the other one. You have to work on them a little bit separately. Now, we tend to talk a lot about working on the forward shoulder position. We've only talked maybe a few times on the podcast about the actual neck yeah. uh, positioning. Um, but with, with your neck positioning, here's a great way you can kind of work on that. Um, stand up against the wall so that your shoulders, butt, ankle, uh, your, your heels, and the back of your head is touching the wall. And then what you want to do is you want to give yourself a little bit of a double chin and mm-hmm. see if you can make your, your neck longer. And you want to push your, your head into the wall while giving yourself a double chin and simultaneously trying to make your neck longer. So if that makes sense, yeah. so can it put There's a back? little nodule like in the back of your head that you can feel it comes to kind of a point. Uh, and that's what we're trying to shoot to get back to, to the wall. So really kind of like tucking that chin back and pulling it back, like I'm almost like turtling myself back to the wall uh, is a great drill. And also neck cars. So this is something we have in Prime Pro where it actually you know shows you how to safely uh, control and, and articulate your neck in different uh, uh, you know directions. So you have you gain access to that. So it's not just your, your go-to isn't always under stress. I'm sticking my head mm. forward. It's called the occipital. That's the that's the, yeah, the bone. bone. Yeah, yeah, right in the back of the head. Yep. There. Yeah, I mean the zone one test is phenomenal for this. Uh, that I mean that that's a staple go to move. I did a video uh, recently um, where I talked about squat priming and uh, addressing my forward head is one of my uh, go to things I have to do every time because I I do still have that so I still battle upper cross syndrome. Uh, which is the rounded shoulders and the forward head, and more so forward head than I have rounded shoulders. So I could totally relate to this question. Uh, so z- literally, just practicing zone one in prime is is phenomenal. As far as an exercise that's good for that too, uh, prone cobra. Uh, prone cobra can be a great uh, great exercise for that movement, and you can do it on the ground or do it on a stability. But ball. you really got to focus on the neck part. You know, yeah. If you, if you just look up. And bring your head back. You're, oh yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna fix that part. No, no, and and, that, and that's just it. You the that's why the zone one first. You need to be aware of what that feels like to set your head back, right? Because mm-hmm. if you if you just cue somebody to bring your head back, a lot of times people actually can't even to, can't even articulate that. That's why I say double chin. I think everybody can knows yeah. what that feels They'll like. They'll look yeah. up and they almost they have lift their chin up to get back. No, you know, instead of pulling it back. No, you're sliding the head back as if it were on a you know on a on a tr- on a track. Yeah. You're not trying to look back. Somebody's poking with their finger right at your chin and it's pushing you directly back. Exactly. So, and, and this is why zone one is so good. It's a, so we're using in the zone one maps prime we're using a wall to give you feedback the wall Mm -hmm. is not necessary for you to prime all these things it's just there so you can feel it right so when you see us uh, address it and then you and then you try and emulate it and you can feel your head go back and then hit the wall you're like okay I, i get what i'm doing the next step is understanding what that feels like then learning to incorporate that on all movements yeah. Because when you lay down and you probably do a bench press, you don't even think because you're thinking about your chest and bench pressing, mm-hmm. you let your head probably creep forward. When you're doing bicep curls and you're thinking about just squeezing your biceps, you let your head creep forward. And so once you understand what you what you need to articulate in your neck, because you've done like a zone one test in MAPS Prime, then you learn to apply that all the time. Like I'm constantly thinking about that when I'm on the computer or am I sitting at dinner? Like Mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll just do that movement and trying to do that as often as possible. Yeah. I have another drill too, that uh, once you get that mechanism where you're, you're pulling back and you're able to understand what that feels like. uh, We actually have this too in the test. So if, if you're squatting, which I actually recommend you probably do this more when you're hip hinging. So you get a long enough stick where it goes all the way to the top of your head down, uh, you you know, to your tailbone and I'm holding the stick behind my head, but now I'm pulling my, my, my neck and my chin back to touch the stick. And now I'm going to fold my body down, uh, as I'm looking down. Cause I know a lot of times as you look down is when you, you know, your tendency to stick mm-hmm. your head forward, uh, you know, that's definitely a common thing. So that this would help you to be able to kind of start looking down, but also be conscious of, you know, keeping that chin tucked back uh, in place. Now, I do this I do this when I fly an airplane. So I use a neck pillow when I fly an 
to plan because I tend to like to fall asleep. And sometimes when I wake up, my neck is a little bit stiff. So what I'll do is while I'm sitting in the chair, I'll drop my shoulders, I'll give myself a double chin, and then I'll I'll consciously try to make my neck longer while I'm holding that position, almost like I'm creating traction. I'm separating the vertebrae in my neck with that straight position. It alleviates a lot of pressure. Now, here's the key with all this. You got to do it all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you if you just do this like a workout, like, like when you squat, you know, two days a week or three days a week, it's not going to work. You have to do this throughout the entire day. So when you're in the car, use the headrest as feedback. When you're at work, every hour, practice it. Every time you're conscious of it, practice it. If you're standing in line, practice it because you're trying to change a a normal, natural, default recruitment pattern that you've had for probably a long time. And the only way you're going to change it is if you create a new one. And the only way the new one gets created is if it overrides the old one, which means you got to do it more. You have to get to the point where that is done more than the old way. Then your neck positioning will start to change. And at first, it's going to be tiring and annoying, and you might get sore, and you got to do it over and over and over. But eventually, if you do it long enough, it starts to become... Um, you know, a natural thing. I mean, uh, a good example is I'm, I'm working on with my daughter right now on her foot. She's got really flat feet, um, uh, almost where, where the arches almost collapse. So I'm doing foot exercise with her and we, we do them, you know, two times a day is as much as I can remind her to do. And then I tell her to practice as much as possible. What I'm noticing now is that just standing normally, it's a little bit better for her now. It's become more natural. This is how you do any type of correctional movement. It has to become more natural because you could consciously think of putting your neck in a better position, but you're not going to stay conscious of your neck position all day long. That would be you know, neurotic. That would be a terrible way to, to live. You want it to be natural. The only way it's going to happen is to practice it frequently, I'd say, as much as you can remember. Um, not super in high intensity, but just perfect. Perfect form each time. 